Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. So, Jack, that's, that's, my man. Yeah. When are you gonna trim the beard, my guy? <laughs> what I, you know, you know, his answer to that is, dude. What? What's your net worth, my guy? <laughs> I feel like he wouldn't ask that question. He would I feel just, like he's a cool guy. I don't away. know him, but he seems like a chill guy. Yeah, yeah. I feel like he would just be like, oh, I like the beard. <laughs> Go on about his day. That's that's probably that's that's his version of asking. All right, dude. You know how much I'm worth. <laughs> you know I what like I like. Someone who would ask that question is maybe <laughs> like the ex CEO of Uber. Do you know the that one guy on 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 TikTok that does a uh, the rich versus really rich? Maybe I think so. Uh, he's the the kind of like generically white guy. Um, no no facial hair, black hair. Uh, I think if you knew off the top, you know. But he does skits of like uh, of of how rich people act versus really rich. And rich people, the rich person would be like, "All right, wh what's your CEO, dude, or what's your net worth, my guy?" And then the really rich would be like, "I mean, I'm a fan of beards." <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, "Actually, I made I made a whole business because I love my beard so much, and I thought you know it looks really good." Blah blah blah. Like, I just woke up dude. one morning, had an idea, <laughs> turned ten million into 150 mil a month. Fucking, there's this one guy on TikTok, and I don't even know if he's real, but apparently he's like rich. He's rich, and he's just like a fucking dick, dude. He's or is he really? So he's not really rich. He's not really rich. But he's either he's rich like, or really rich. Yeah, he's. I'm just like, dude, like, my God, like, why are you so angry? It could be also, you know, Gary V was talking about why he's very on ten in his in his content, and he was like, well, dude. There's a lot of content out there. I got to like make people somehow be gravitate towards mine. And one way to do that is to be boisterous and somewhat polarizing. NFTs, dude. <laughs> you know, I'm not really feeling a lot of gratitude from you, dude. I think you're going to maybe post but, like six, seven contents a day. It's all about yeah, content. Yeah. Gratitude. But also, bro, the, you could lit you literally just told a brand, a brand of a dude. You did yeah. the quotation marks wonderful you did the high voice bro you did you did the the empathy it's like thank empathy, you dude. thank you for being my commercial dude, like, uh -huh, that's, dude number, yeah. that's number four dude bro the the gary v parodies are the, the best pro, things i've ever seen and he it was it was actually an, i was reading an article chat magazine dude uh but you know it's, it's very pro wrestling dude. it's very wwe um he um you get five five traits that people identify you with and then boom 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 He's very good at reaching a very wide age group. That too. You could ask like a 13-year-old and maybe like a 55-year-old and they possibly might know who he is. That'd be a good question to ask him. Yeah. We'll probably he's, on, he's on like fucking from Snapchat to LinkedIn. Like, Yeah. He, he loves the media, man. The medium, rather. The medium, dude. Does he have like a family? <laughs> that's a really good question does he have like a wife and kids you know i venture to say no if, if he gonna, does legendary dude i feel like oh, fuck i feel like he, he he said he kicked it with his dad he's big he's big on family we know he's big on family <laughs> but what so i was listening to this, uh uh a discord chat with uh one of the people on his uh uh gary uh, what's it called nft what's his, his nft branch called uh gary vnft and he does have you, a wife he does eh lizzie vaynerchuk no, married hey. 2004 she's, oh you're oh my goodness oh she's this is she oh my goodness she's very attractive there's like a couple pictures of different women so i don't know which one is her uh oh uh, uh, that one looks more his attractiveness level <laughs> so yeah what were you saying vnft uh, one of the people on his teams, um, uh, was talking in the discord one time, uh, and he said, he also, <laughs> he doesn't talk about money really, unless it's talking about like money as it regards to business, but yeah, y you don't hear him talking about, you know, strict wealth or money. Likes the, the grind, the process. Uh, you know that is that is the thing that's it's just so good at it the money comes with it that's usually how it works man i do like he did you see his nft 
clip talk where he's talking about how he made ninety one million dollars this year Shit. off of VN off VNFT. So yeah, he made ninety one million dollars, and like I'm looking at him I'm like, dude, this is like he's literally sitting there in sweatpants and like a beanie. Rich versus really rich. Yeah, I'm just like my god, and he's sitting there and he's talking about it like it's nothing. But he was yeah. talking about like, dude, like my only concern here is like, uh, like there's a lot of people that are like Gonna making these project projects and just fucking people over. And yeah. he was like, I really had to like bet my brand on like, am I willing to like risk everything if this project fails and everybody sees NFTs as a fucking scam in like 24 months? But like, I mean that that people kind of control that, and and someone who has a super big brand money and like multiple resources can make a pretty good nft project because you can associate it with utility rather than uh people kind of just making random things and hoping that the speculation survives where gary v can be like first of all the people that are buying probably initially gary v stuff are very super into gary v brand and he's built that over decades so you have that you already have a community built in um you have people that are already interested in evolution of internet stuff built in. And if you have a big brand that is worth going to festivals and concerts and stuff, you can be like, well, you have a ticket and it's now worth something. I can, I can help you out. Think about this. Okay, so Gary Vee made all that money off of like children's looking drawings that like have like utility, right? Imagine if Mr. Beast, who has hundreds of videos with hundreds of millions of views, made a couple of his videos NFTs. And if you own the NFT, like you get like maybe even a small portion of the video's revenue, 20% or something. That would go crazy. That would go nuts. Mm -hmm. That would be ridiculous. If somebody owned the Squid Game, $200 million view, 200 million view video. That would make him a fucking gajillionaire. Yeah. You can you can value things on the internet now. Pretty cool. Like that's like that's like that'd be a combination of you owning an asset that just makes money forever without you having to do anything. Because it's just a piece of entertainment on the internet. As long as YouTube via, via YouTube though. Like it, <laughs> that's that's hasn't been made yet. And plus it's Mr. Beast video who is like a cultural figure right now. Mm. So it's like a double whammy. That's like, how much do you think that would be worth? I don't fucking know. I don't know how much money that video makes per month. Can make a hundred grand a month. Make... Probably a nice few ETH right now. <laughs> 2021. You should try uh, that. And then just throw all the profits into a banger ass fucking video. Like yeah. fucking Michael it, Bay it production. Work. But then how do you, how are you supposed to give portions of YouTube revenue towards people's wallets? Well, you like have to, to be just, like a person based. Not you have obvious. to track it. Well, he has a he actually has a video that's kind of similar and I forgot what the content of the video was, but it, like if his friend like completed a challenge for every 1000 views, his friend gets like a dollar or something. Like for He's have an accountant. Literally, he'll just pay somebody 50 grand a year to just keep track of that. Someone make the technology, eh? Yeah, or you can just yeah, make the software. I don't know. The possibilities are endless. You do that, dude. I'm sure Google might not like it, but you could have like a third party do it, like a third party software. You go know, YouTube to like bank account, but that's not very cool. Because I'm, I don't know. Google, I'm sure, does not like that idea. <laughs> dude, Google says, "Hey, let's keep it. Let's keep it in the family, huh?" Revedergy. I wonder. Well, I mean, it's his vid- It's his money at the end of the day. He can do what he wants with it. At the at the end of of the of the funnel, though. But going through that funnel, you still got to go YouTube's money reward system. YouTube already takes fifty five percent. Like, how much more do they want? But but I'm saying, not even like taking a part of it. Just like the technical. If like I want to put this money from YouTube's ad revenue system into web three ecosystem like that's, that's some friction there Jaffeo? So, if, so they wouldn't like it if he reinvested his own money into like a competitor they wouldn't like if there was a, a software that was like that they wanted to funnel quickly into something else 
good like a software that goes into ideally the back end of Google ad revenue systems. Oh, I don't think they care because they literally they build tools so you can make your own products to that. Like right. Google Analytics API kits, you can like plug into your own software to like track your websites and your YouTube stats and stuff. But not the money money, hey? There's no there's no money ad revenue API, is there? Oh, I don't know. They they do have nice APIs you can track a lot of things with. Yeah. That's what I was saying. As 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 this stuff gets m- more and more into the future, companies are going to have a big hard time with a pressure of being more transparent and interoperable with stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and either that wins and they're going to have to endure the pain and like change structures of corporate stuff or or that system doesn't win and you kind of have the same things. But if the uh, the transparency continues to be the uh the the way people want to function with internet and with companies a lot of these companies are gonna have to to take a little punch and and change hey yo that's how it works cycles no one can last forever 